Hi everyone! In the next few episodes of How to Make an Action RPG in Godot 4, we will be creating a simple inventory. In this first part, we will look at creating the visuals for our inventory, opening and closing the menu, and pausing the game when the inventory is open. And now let's get started! Let us start by creating a new scene for our inventory GUI. The root node should be a control node. To create the background for our inventory, we will then use a 9-patch rect. Next, we need a texture we can add to it. But there isn't really any inventory art in the Ninja Adventure art pack that we've been using so far. So I made some that fits the style of the Ninja Adventure art pack. I've uploaded the art to itch.io and you can download it here for free and use it for whatever you want. If you want to support this series a little extra, you can also choose to make a small donation when you get the sprites. But it's in no way required. Okay, once you've downloaded the art, go add the inventory rect as the texture to the 9-patch rect. If we try and scale the texture now, it should scale normally. However, what makes 9-patch rects so smart is that we can make them scale a bit different. To do this, we need to adjust the patch margins. These should be set to the size of the corners of the texture. In our case, this will be 6 for all the margins. But feel free to experiment with the margins to get a better understanding of how it works. We can also change the axis stretch. But for my sprite, the default stretch is just fine. You can read more on the different options in the Godot documentation. Finally, let us save the scene. And then add it as a child of the canvas layer in our world scene. Finally, let's test the game to see how it looks. Now let's create the slots that will show our items in the inventory. For this, we create a new scene with a panel as the root, and then add a sprite to it. For this sprite, we will use the inventory slot art. And under animation, we set the V-frames to 2. Now, we can use the frame properties to change between the empty slot and the full slot, but more on this in a later episode. For now, let's use the empty one and save the scene. We still need to fix two things here. First, we need to remove this semi-transparent color of the panel. So select the root, go to the visibility properties and click on the self-modulate color and then set the alpha value to zero. Next, select the sprite, go to offset and disable the centered property. Finally, we want to make sure that the size of the panel matches the size of the sprite. When these two sizes match up, go to the layout properties of the root panel, open transform, and copy the size values here to the custom min size properties. And now the slot looks ready to be added to the inventory. So let's save and go back to the inventory scene. We can add the slots in a bunch of different ways. But Godot has specific container nodes that are really handy when we want to place nodes in a row or in a grid in the GUI. So let's add a grid container as the child of the 9-patch rect. And then add some slots to this new grid container. Right now we just have one column of slots. But we can change this in the inspector menu of the grid container. I think I want 15 slots in my inventory for now. 
and divide it into five columns. So let's set the columns property to five for now. And then I add a total of 15 slots to the inventory. I'll also quickly adjust the nine patch rect so it's big enough to hold all the slots. To center the slots in the inventory, we can then select the grid container, open the layout properties, set layout mode to anchors, and set the anchors preset to center. Finally, we want to make sure that the size of the root node matches the size of the inventory, and set the min size as we did for the slots earlier. Feel free to also experiment with all of these things until you find a look that you like. When we test now, the inventory is displayed in the top left corner, but we can use the layout anchors to center it on the screen really easily. You can also try out some of the other anchors presets to learn more about how they work. Okay, now we have the base for our inventory, but we don't want it to be open all the time. To be able to open and close it, we first add a script to the inventory root node and create two functions called open and close. And also a variable called is open to keep track of the state. For now, we then open by setting visible to true and is open to true and close by setting visible and is open to false. We then need to call these functions from somewhere. We could of course check for input in this same script, but I prefer controlling it from the outside. In the world scene, add a script to the canvas layer and then add the Godot function input to the script. Now we need to create a new input action for opening the inventory. So let's open the project settings, go to the input map tab and add a new action called toggle inventory. I'm adding the I key as an event to our new action. Now in our canvas layer script, we add a reference to the inventory GUI. And in the input function, we then check if the toggle inventory action is pressed. And if the inventory is open, we close it and otherwise we open it. To make sure the inventory is closed by default, we also add the Godot ready function and close the inventory here. Now the inventory opens and closes like we want it to, but both the player and the enemies move around even when the inventory is open and blocks the screen. This could easily be really frustrating to the player. So let's pause the game when the inventory is open. In the inventory script, we create two new signals called opened and closed and emit them in the corresponding functions. In the world scene, we then connect these signals to the root node script. In the function connected to the open signal, we then pause the game using the getTree function and set the tree's paused property to true. And in the closed function, we set it back to false. Finally, we select the canvas layer in the world scene, locate the process properties and set mode to always. Without this, the GUI layer would also be paused. 
and then we wouldn't be able to close the inventory again. We can now open and close our inventory, and the game is paused while the inventory is open. And I think this is a good place to stop this episode. I've left links to both the new inventory art and relevant parts of the Godot documentation down in the description of this video. And that's all for now. Bye!